Hi everybody, I'm Simon Cooper. I'm from the Cooper Strip Club. And today we've got a bit of a treat. We've got a worn up veneered wardrobe. So I'll just get some strippers started. I'm going to strip this half on the live stream and then we'll finish the other half afterwards. So this is our stripper, this is the red one. And we basically putting a light coat on. We've got quite a lot of ventilation going here today. We're in a bit of a drought out there. So we just very quick these triggers are quite deceptive how much we can get on how quickly. Now, let's show you the guide. So, three steps. Step one, take off or strip what's on the surface. So basically it says stick the stripper on, wait for it to reach the surface, and while it's working its way through, keep it damp. What's going to happen on here is it's going to, there'll be parts that get dryish, like around at the top, and what we need to do is just give that another puff to uh, keep, it, keep it down. Now, so back to the stripper. One of the advantages of spraying is that you can spray straight over the top. If you are brushing it on, we often get asked about brushing. This is where brushing is a real pain because it's really difficult to brush over top of what's there. We make our stripper thin because it's, it absorbs better, way, way quicker acting, goes way, way further. So any questions, just pop them in the comments, emails, whatever you want to do. Send in photos of your projects. So this is, I did a little test earlier on the bottom right there. And we determined that it was a shellac based finish, which is what we sort of expected. And so what you find with shellac based finishes is they just dissolve. Um, they don't go all bubbly like a polyurethane or that type of thing. It, it effectively dissolves the finish. So um, now what we're going to be doing today is as we use the product we move over to the black table. We're going to stick that there and say that is in a stripping pack. I'll we'll also take my hat off because it's way too hot for the hat today. I'm going to do a winter live stream the hat can stay on. Okay, so I'm going to do a test to see where it's up to. The big, big, big thing is give the, give the product its time. There's an, old, there's an old Kiwi saying, don't buy a dog and bark yourself. So I can feel, it feels less resistance there, but there's a bit of a crunch there. See if we can hear it. It's telling you that it's just hanging on a little bit. And we just start collecting goo as we go. So the idea of these live stream, or what I'm calling them more nowadays, is our real-time recordings, is we want to show you, it's really easy to put together a three-minute tutorial and, and make it look like there's nothing in it. Um, but it's really important for you to get the little tricks and then see that, how long it actually takes to soak through. This is really fast, where a thick lead paint would take a lot longer. So it's really important that we're sort of using this phrase, um, real time. So if it takes an hour to strip the wardrobe, then that's what it takes. 
Uh, we don't want to make it sound like it's all done in two minutes. So you just keep an eye on the wetness. Now a couple of masking things. You've probably seen this before. If you haven't, I'll take you through it. This is a pre-taped masking foam. See if I can work it with my gloves. So this has got the stripper-proof masking tape and plastic, and it comes out to half a meter wide. And that's what I've used on top of here. It's, um, it's got tape there and it, and it goes back, the cabinet's about the right width. So I'm able to keep, because I'm not going to strip the actual top. Um, so we've protected that. If there's um, something that's wider, like I wanted to protect the back wall. So there we've used the 2.4 meter one. So um, as we say in our brochure, uh, protect other surfaces. Now, this goes on the other side of the hat. Oh, get in the light. So these aren't in our stripping pack, uh, but they're available on our, on our website. That's the 550 wide, 2.4 meters wide, and both of them are 15 meters long. Now, we'll do another test. Just a little, you want a mush. And we've got a mush, like cooking. Dip the spuds in. When it's soft, it's cooked. We don't want crunchy veg vegetables here. Okay, so this is this is good. Now, now something to look at. You can't really see it now, but over here you can. That veneer, because this is not solid timber, it's it's veneer on top of solid some possibly or maybe it's a, uh, um, a plywood but the grain of that is going up that way and it's going all over the place and so um, you've, you've got to like be aware of that so you don't hack into it with, with blades etc so what I was um, going to do here is get an old towel so my good lady has donated another towel to the cause and it's, this is like an old rough beachy towel type one so it's got a bit of a, a grip of its own so let's see if we can Mate, this look cool, Arthur. Huh? Are we ready? Let's have a look at that. Cool. So, just sort of, in this case, it's spray and white. As our Australian cousins would say, too easy. A positive bunch over there. So we just, because the stripper has dissolved it, we're just wiping that off. The stripper is virtually pH neutral. Again, people comment on every video that I obviously are getting melted by this, but I'm not. The strippers, first of all, I'm not putting it on myself. And I've got a, a barrier cream on, which I'll show you when I've got a few moments. Now, just leaving that as it is. And now we get the, the broad knife. It's like sharing a sheet, in a way. So, dragging, we're not pushing. Because this is a delicate veneer, I'm not using my little four edge blade this time. Just a little bit more delicate on these surfaces. So it's, it's all just dissolving up. Now we have a, a logic that we talk about each time we, we, we have this claim of no sanding. And the thing is, is the person that made this can, cabinet all those years ago 
they sanded it for us. And what I'm doing here is I'm dissolving the old finish, being the old shellac, and then just lightly removing that with the trowel. It's just so easy on these type of finishes. And people, they get out their scrapers and sanders and all that sort of thing, and they just create all this damage, and there's a real good chance you're gonna sand straight through the veneer. Always see that always it's always a dragging action. We it's very rare we do a push. Occasionally a dry patch there that could have had a little bit more, should have had a little bit more stripper put on there, but didn't. And we'll deal with that with So just looking at the amount of goo so far. So that's just dissolved shellac. No. Now, I might just get that a puff while we're doing the other bit. Every project you see us do, we're going to be the same basic method, but there'll be some technique changes as we go. We're basically following the same method. Poor old knees. So just make sure every towel you donate, you get yourself a, a new matching set. Now, um, just give this another bit of a puff. It was a bit thirsty down there. And now we're into the brush. So this is a copper bristled detail brush, amazing brushes. Um, they look a bit space age, but you can imagine when you're using it in here, your knuckles aren't in the way. Um, it's very, very soft. This is what I clean my hat with. And brilliant on these carp bits. Just keep it damp. So this leaves the patina in place. It's made of steel wool. I haven't talked about this yet. This is our European uh, made steel wool. It's very long stranded and it's, um, it's sharp and it's ideal for these types of places. And we just Never scrub the surface if it's 
gone dry, you, you must always put a puffer stripper on so that it has a chance to, so it's way better. But we wouldn't go across like that. Well, I'm a bit nervous with the grain going up and down there. So again, what I'll do is use the roughness of the um, old, old gnarly towel. Okay, and Okay, let's put some more stripper on. This is part two. This is stripping what's in the surface. So when the cabinet was first made and the sanding was all there, everything, the very first coat of varnish soaked into the grain, and this is the one we're getting now. Grains coming out gorgeous. Look in the light, always so you've got the wet reflection you're looking for. Putting it on light so it doesn't run anywhere, run all over the place. Get the odd drip, but nothing much. any weird furniture polishes and things that have been used over the years that have gone into the wood it's going to take all that out all the silicones and all that sort of stuff it'll all come pouring out so we'll leave that for a couple of minutes so I'll um, just add to our pile over here so here's the copper detail brush we have those in all our packs and we've got the um, European steel wool. So, so the stripper, the applicator bottles and triggers, the, um, that's why we have a moment up our sleeve. The stri our triggers, there's a, there's a really cool video we've got on our website, coopersstripclub.com, and you go to the tutorials and you'll see a getting started one, and I'll talk about all the triggers and setting them up and using them and cleaning them and all that. But one of the big things is this is not a normal, um, sort of garden center trigger it's got no o-ring here normal triggers have o-rings and uh, they just fail instantly um, where well, this one's really really good um, doesn't last forever but it's um, a really good value and there are spares in our packs so. now yep you see so just little bits. Just keep an eye on. We're just looking for the wet reflection if it's disappeared anywhere. The stripper's not going to hurt the veneer. A lot of products out there will actually um, delaminate it. This is not going to do any of that. This is the original purpose when I made the product originally, I don't know, but posing it on 40 years now, is, was for antique furniture. So, no. All right. Oh, before I do that, I should really show the guy. This is our brochure at the moment. When you get your one, it may have changed, but basically, that's the, the, the guide. And we've done number one. Number two, that's coloured red as well, is. Uh, so that's stripper and stripper because it's both red and um, the uh, Arthur's going to have to be mad because his camera's going around the place. Uh, but strip what's in the surface. 
And um, so that's what we're doing now. So strippers on, a couple of minutes later, and we're in touch. Okay, so got the brush. And the main bulk of everything came off with the towel earlier. It's amazing just how much finish was in the grain. So this is extremely fine, this brush. The sides of the cabinet are normal straight grain, so we're not going to have these sort of issues. Other projects you'll, you'll, you'll see we hardly even use a brush, but in this case the brushes are perfect. I like how this has got this little knobby bit here you can hang on to so it's quite when I first saw them originally I thought oh they're a bit weird looking but it turned out great Just light. See that grain starting to explode. You comparing that over to the other side. It's amazing. Now this is what they call book matched veneer. The, the veneers here are all off the same slab and it's a little bit, they, they slice it off like luncheon sausage and they basically, they fold it out but they match and they call that book matching and it's even folded over there so it's 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 quite amazing this whole feature it's quite spectacular grain It's amazing how much finish is in the grain. And again, if you get out the sander, you've got to actually, like open cast mining, you've got to actually remove all that layer to get it. So this just goes in and dissolves it. Don't push hard, just soft. Don't scrub a dry surface, so I wouldn't go back to that without putting a little bit more stripper on. Always scrub the surface wet. Now down into the 
of the near there. So it's all light scrubbing. Now, when way of explaining this grain is called compression grain and if you imagine a tree with the trunk hanging off the side there's many many tons of weight forcing down and underneath the the branch on the trunk the grain folds on itself it actually starts sort of going in like Viennetta ice cream, if you know that one. But it folds and causes this, this um, compression. And when they cut it, it just, it, when it gets the new finish on it, it just glows. Now, you probably got him earlier, but the Chatterwain forget what she did all. thing is too with this is we don't want to sand it and then have all the easy flat bits all absolutely fleshy wood and then you've got the carved bits that then gets out of control. Okay so the third bit of the game is the uh, flushing. Now I think in this case today I might use the rag, the, the old toweling all the way. So here's the blue one, um, and this is our, our rinse, and it's uh, part three of the system. You'll see on the guide, it's, it's coloured blue, so flush the surface clean, and the, the purpose of this is not to neutralise, it's to rinse clean. It says on the left column, spray scrub, spray wipe. And um, this is basically taking everything that's soft, and it's um, rinsing it out. No, I'm going to get a second. Well. So this rinse is a, based on a paraffin based spirit. So we're spraying and at the same time we're scrubbing. So we're just rinsing the grain. So normally I would be using a a thing called a grip pad, but because of the nature of the grain and everything, so you can see the residues coming out, and um, that's what we're looking to do. It's just getting, we're just getting rid of soft residues. Now, when it's wet like this, this is the colour it would be with a new finish. And it's our sort of looking glass to what we've achieved. And it's looking pretty amazing. And you look at it compared to over there. We've suddenly got our grain again. Now if you think it should have more colour back in it, then you can stain it. You can do what you like. Um, everyone's duties in the eye of the beholder and apparently everyone has an opinion. So you're spraying and wiping at the same time. You're not putting it on and leaving it on like the stripper because it will evaporate. When you strip paint off glass, this is a sort of similar method where you're using rags and um, so you're not scratching the glass. Thank 
just spray, scrubbing, wiping all at the same time, coming off onto the rag, again, seeing the colour. Anywhere with the rag you feel a bit of resistance with that nice open hairy texture of the toweling. It just goes all any bit of soft varnish, it just comes straight away. So behind me we have a fan that's just gently wafting over my head. So I'm not smelling a thing. The strippers are all very mild anyway. The ventilation is is the key. Just so everything's going that direction and there's another fan on the other side taking it out the other side. So just think of ventilation as the as the main game. If the room you're working in has no smell at the end, then you know you've done a good job. These products are very low odors to start with compared to your normal strippers. So, the old touch test, smooth as, no damage to nothing. So what I'm going to do now is show you a wood finish, but that's now stripped. Never look at the wet, sorry, at the dry colour, so when this all dries off, it's going to, it's still got um, flusher in the grain, but if you look down the bottom right corner, where it's dried off from earlier, it's, it's got a very, very dry colour, and that's not what it's going to look like with a finish. As I said, it's going to look like it is when it's wet with the flusher. Now, let's see if I've got everything over there. The, um, there are a couple of things that we have in our packs that we didn't use, um, which I will put over there anyway. We have these grip pads that we will probably use on the side um, where it's a straight grain. So any chance to have a quick squeeze of that? So this is mahogany, the uh, front is a veneer uh, walnut, but on the sides we will use our more, um, uh, more normal system where we're using steel wool and grip pad and that type of stuff um, because this grip pad will get into that with the flusher. Uh, but like I said, on the front of the veneers we want it to protect. Now, these blades, um, we may not even get to use this on this project. We use this on paint and thick polyurethane, but really not there. And of course, you saw the flusher. So we've got strip, flush, wool, grip pads, um, brush and blade. Anything else, Arthur, in the packs? I think that's everything. Yeah. And um, if you go on to, again, cooperstripclub.com, I've got a bit of sweat here, it looks like it's hard work, but it's not, it's just a 30 degree day or something. Um, if you go on to cooperstripclub.com, you'll see all our stripping packs and the uh, sizes and costings and all that sort of thing. Um, they offer a bit around the different parts of the world. And all our packs we air freight anywhere you want. Now, how much do you need? Well, I used that much, so 
so what's that? Um, 300, so I used 200 mils. Even though it looked like I was using a lot, doing lots of coats, I actually only used 200 mils to do all that. And so, the time you get the whole cabinet done, so there's 200, 400, um, you know, it might end up using a litre of the stripper. Um, so it, it goes a very, very long way, way, way further than any gel block. So anyway, I'll just put that over there, so that just gives you an idea how far the stuff goes. Now, uh, we've got a question about moisturiser from Vicky. What a good question! Um, how long before you put moisturiser on the cabinet? Uh -huh. Well, Vicky, um, you can do with moisturiser straight away. The, the moisturiser will allow any flusher that's still in the grain to, to move through it. So you don't have to, if you were polyurethaning it or Danish oiling it or painting it or anything else like that, finish that dries hard, you will, you'd probably want to leave it till the next day so it's absolutely thoroughly dry. With the uh, moisturiser I'm going to show you now, um, any, if there was a little bit of flusher in there, it'll just travel straight through the moisturiser without an issue. So with this sort of piece, you can start and put the finish on in the same sitting. So, now, this is our finish. Um, Moisturiser, it's a blend of gum, oil and wax. And think of it like leather care for wood. It's a really, really amazing product. And we've had it 30 something years now. So we've been making it, and we just I should pour it over here so you can see me pouring. So just give it a good shake. Middle of winter is a bit thicker than this. Um, like summer, it's nice and thin. Is that the same as the as the shellac scrap? Is that a different? That's a very good question. We've got two containers. Yes. <laughs> That was a good point. Okay, moisturizer in the container, paintbrush, and just slap it on. You don't have to be good with a brush. It doesn't matter how hot it is, how cold it is. It doesn't matter if there's dust in the room. And the wood is just going to absorb what it can. First time in a hundred years, probably it's had a feed. Good way to involve the kids at this point. What's the safety level for the moisturiser? Um, it's uh, non-toxic. Uh, the um, it doesn't taste very nice, but none of the ingredients, none of it's based on this gum, oil, and wax, and none of them uh, are toxic. But they're all edible, um, so it's really good on cots, um, breadboards, um, salad bowls, all those sorts of things. Um, the solvent that's in it that gives it its viscosity is virtually non-toxic. It is, you, so here's a bit of technical data for you. You would need to drink 20 litres in one sitting to have a 50% chance of death. You would actually die from 20 litres of liquid, but... Um, from an exploded stomach? Yeah, but not from the, um, not from what's in it. This is a really, really, really good product. It's um, used on um, uh, people use it on stainless steel um, fridges, those sort of surfaces. It's really good for um, dashboards and cars, all that sort of stuff. You can see it's just drinking, drinking it up. Now you leave this normally on for two days, and not to dry out. You leave it on to, to drink and drink and drink, and then you add more to it as it goes. Now let's see if we can find up here, yeah. So, can we see those dry patches out there? Uh, yep. And over here, so that's showing how rapidly it's absorbing. And 
So you would want to leave this for a good couple of days uh, to, to drink. And what, what happens up the top there, you can see it's disappearing up there around the top. That's all good. And so what you do is you just paint some more on. Straight over top. Now you don't have to wait for this, you don't have to wait six hours or anything before you can put the next coat on. You just demand feed it. If it's thirsty, give it more. But only give it to it where, it, where it's needing it. Now later on when I'm doing this other half, it's not going to matter um, that a little bit gets onto it. It's not like I've got this skin finish I'm putting on. Now, so let's pretend we've, it's two days of drinking and we've got to a point that it just isn't drinking anymore. Like you don't sit and buy it and watch it. You basically every few hours you check it out. And if it needs some more you put it on and if it doesn't you just leave it alone. So after that time goes by, and it doesn't matter if it's two weeks, but when you're happy that it's not drinking anymore, what we do is we get ourselves a, another bit of dry cloth and we're going to remove what's there. Now I'm only going to take this pot piece off so you can compare the two sides because we will actually put some more on and leave it on for a couple of days. So just remove and there's more on here than there would be in two days time so it will be a little bit smeary this first time around. So you're just taking off the surplus. Now if you were planning to re it, French polish it, um, anything like that, then you would not be doing this moisturiser because it would make that other finish fall off. But if you like this moisturiser, this is what you do. So you just... Once it's moisturised, how do you maintain it? Um, every now and again, you just, you're just living with it, loving it. And then every now and again, you'll look at it and it might look a bit thirsty. Depends on where it is in the house. Like it might be um, by windows and things. So if it's looking a little lacklustre one day, you just brush more moisturiser straight over the top. It just, you just demand, it, it, it will tell you if it wants more. You can't put on too much. It's not building up. It's not like a, a Danish oil where if you keep putting it on every year or two, you know, in 10, 15 years time, it's so thick you're gonna to have to take it all off again. This, we've got displays that are over 30 years old that have got literally dozens of coats of moisturizer on and it's, it's only ever, it is only wood thickness all the time. Now, this is a little bit saturated, so you put that in a plastic bag, put it under the sink somewhere and you can use that for dusting. Um, if you're using oils based on tang oil or linseed, that sort of thing, if you put the rag with oil in a, in a plastic bag, it's likely to burn your house down. Um, with the moisturiser, it, it won't do that. It doesn't self-combust. So, now I'm just burnishing it. I've taken off the bulk. Like I say, if I had um, left it longer, there'd be way less to have buffed off. I just want to show you this part. and it all settles down. So it's a, a finish that's in the wood, not on the wood. It gives you a glow. It's not for everybody. Some people like gloss and other things. And if you like that sort of more naturally look, then here you are. And it just, you can't, over buff it, the more you, you the more love you give it, the more it will glow. Okay. Gorgeous. Let veneers have a real feed. So and that's it. So we'll continue on soon finishing the rest of it. And Deliver it back with just one door done. And um, oh, I'll just try to lift that to a ladder. And it's just drinking away. And what else do I to tell you about? Uh, you know, the packs, getting started, videos online, lots and lots of stuff on our website. 
one of the cool things to do is because um, when we post things on different social media, it doesn't get to everybody. So if you want to see our videos, go and join our strip club on our website on cooperstripclub.com and um, join that. That way you won't miss the different um, videos that we do. So if you're looking for a stripper, a stripper that really gets it off, Cooper's the stripper that gets it off every time.